Hello, this is Everard Junction, and this is uh, my review of the Class 105 two-car DMU set by Backman. Now, uh, it's basically a day after this thing has hit the shops, so uh, this is probably one of the first re first reviews or pictures or shots or anything of the uh, the blue one, because obviously uh, the green one is completely the wrong time period for Everard Junction. So, uh, yeah, this is what it looks like in the box. All nicely packed up and everything, as any Backman model usually is. So uh, I'll open it up and uh, we'll have a look inside. Right, well, here it is. Locked up in its impenetrable plastic fortress. I've managed to get the dummy car out, which is over there. And uh, there really is a lot of packaging with this Loco. Really make sure it's nice and safe. And I suppose it's a bit OTT, but it can all be recycled. So if you want to be nice to the planet, recycle the box. If you want your train to be worth money in the future, if you ever come to sell it, keep the box. We've got the dummy car out already, and as you can see, it's a fantastically well detailed model. Really does look the business. Beautiful smooth sides, just like a Mark 1 coach. All the windows are brilliant, you've even got a you know, little first class detail there. Into the arrows, nicely well applied, you've got the private on the driver's door. The camera will focus. Zoom out a bit. There we go bogies are very nice just like they are on the 108 and it really does look like a very smart model I love the uh, the front of it as well with the two big windows that's a nice touch got nicely uh, separately painted door handles flush glazing all the way along the side another very nicely applied number the roof is also very nice got those really nice fine wires there like you have on the 108 various I guess these are ventilation sort of things very nice, and the uh, the bogey day the bogey detail is good as well. If I roll it, you can see there lots of detail under there, all separately applied and all very nice. We've got the usual uh, coupling arrangement on the back with the DMUs, which is like this nice funny f flip sort of hook thing. It's very good; it never comes undone. Mine certainly doesn't, anyway. And again, we've got similar levels of detail on the back. We've got a nice separately painted door. Got the uh, electricity warning symbols and then more fine railings and stuff as well. So yeah, on the whole, so far, this is a beautifully detailed and lovely model. So I'll get the other end out and join the two together and we'll have a bit more of a closer look. Okay, so uh, this is the business end with the engine, which has been beautifully detailed down there. Looks very smart and uh, comes with a few accessories as well. We've got uh, various bits of uh, coupling equipment and hoses and stuff that you can add to the front which is certainly more than you used to get with the uh, 108 and I think you just got one or two hoses with that, no hooks or anything. If we pick it up you feel that straight away this is an extremely heavy car, it's much heavier than the 108 which I wasn't expecting but uh, certainly means it will be reliable and a strong puller. Got separately painted exhaust pipes here, all the engine equipment separately applied Nice bogies, they're basically the same as the 108. And we got uh, bogies over here as well. And there's the uh, pickups and stuff for the wheels. It's very similar to the 108 mechanism under here. And then there's the business end where uh, you actually get the power to the wheels. The motor's hiding in the luggage compartment along here somewhere, probably behind that window. And again, we've got more separately applied detail and more tiny little letters and words and things. Like that, it's nice. The mesh behind this door is nicely applied as well, that's separate. And we've got, uh, don't know if you can see that, it's quite, oh yeah, there we go, there it is. You've got the little uh, hole where the exhaust used to be, and then they've plated over it, and the exhaust now runs up the back of the unit, like uh, it does on the 108. From what I've read, the earlier Class 105s had the exhaust routed through the roof. And Backman have correctly rerouted it because this is a later model and not an earlier one. So that's nicely done. And again, the front is more or less the same with your nice separately applied wipers in the interior. It's very nice. You've got the uh, brake wheel, I think that's the brake wheel there. It's more detail. It's difficult to see inside, but there you go. Some seats there, they're painted separately to indicate first class, I think. Oh, they all seem to be red. Okay, so all the seats are the same colour. But yeah, it's very nice. And there's the horn. That's a nice touch down there. Little horn. And there's 
coupling hoses and other bits and pieces. It's all very nice. So uh, yeah, I'll couple the two together and have a look and see what it looks like with the lights on. And then uh, I'll run it in and uh, see how it handles compared to my 108. Right, okay, here she is with the, uh, the lights on. Destination blinds are illuminated. They look really smart. So you can see on the front it's going to lower stoffed. The uh, front lights are currently yellow and red because it's on DC at the moment. I haven't chipped it yet because it needs to be running, which is also why it's making that funny buzzing noise. That's because it's on uh, DC mode on the lens. Backman have really done a smart job with this. And I think the lights are slightly better inside because here you can already see the interior lights. With the 108, you can't see the interior lights at all, just the front lights. So uh, move up to the other end and see how it looks at this end. There you go. It's more of the same at this end. Again, it's lit up at this end saying it's going to Norwich. And uh, looks really smart. We move down the side as well. You can get an overall feel for the entire unit. It's very nice. You can see all the lighting in the roof as well. There's so much separately applied detail to this unit. It's really impressive. It's certainly worth buying it, I think. So, uh, yeah, well, the lights are on. So let's see what it's like with the uh, loft lights off. See how it compares to the 108's levels of interior lighting. Go up here, turn the lights off. Okay. Yeah, they look pretty much the same, I'd say. Well, it's difficult to tell, really. They're both very good. I'd say the They're pretty much the same, to be honest. There's not much difference in levels of brightness. But I did read that uh, the lighting on the uh, 105 is supposed to be more consistent and less susceptible to flickering. Because uh, if any of you have got a 108, you know the rear power car even with nice clean track does like to flicker occasionally you need to take it apart and clean it out and uh, that becomes a bit of a noise but uh, hopefully that won't be so much of an issue with this you can see the lighting is very nice it's all consistent throughout the entire train very good just have to remember that it's running on DC mode at the moment which is why the front lights look like they're a different colour to the 108 because the red and the yellow are both trying to work at the moment because it's on DC so uh, yeah, that concludes the detailing part, so now uh, let's get it out on the layout and see how it goes. Right, okay, let's go. Yeah, I certainly think I need to give the track a little bit of a clean. But, uh, I'll show you some more shots of it driving around now. You know, seems to negotiate the helixes nicely. And let's see how it makes with the tunnel. No problem. So far so good, almost completed the uh, running in procedure and uh, yeah it's a smashing really good diesel. I recommend it to uh, anyone modelling uh, 1970s, 1980s or earlier. It's really nice, nice and smooth, lights are good, 
detail is fantastic. The motor is well hidden inside this compartment, you can't tell it's there at all. It's generally a really good, nice multiple unit. So, uh, yeah, that concludes my review of this uh, multiple unit.